Hey, Ernie Johnson here, and I'm joined by Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. Tonight, it'll be the San Antonio Spurs going up against the Toronto Raptors. For the Raptors, they haven't forgotten the fact that this team swept them last year in the regular season. This is a game they had circled going in. Tonight, two teams that have had great success, the kind of battle that could have future ramifications. Kenny, these teams may have to play each other again down the road in the playoffs. How can they set the tone here? Oh, send a message. If, even if you got to write it and give it to the ball boy to take it down to the other bench, you send that message that we're here to play, and this is how it's going to be today, tomorrow, and in the future. And as a player, you look forward to these matchups, Ernie, because as a team, you learn where you guys stand against the best. And now let's send it down to Kevin Harlan as we approach tip-off. We've got basketball action at the AT&T Center. We're in San Antonio, Texas, the home of the Spurs, live on 2K Sports. I'm Kevin Harlan, along with Greg Anthony and Brent Berry, our terrific analysts, and David Aldridge is our sideline reporter. Looking at San Antonio, they took the win in their last game against the Bulls in Chicago. And always tough on the road, but that attack mindset that they brought offensively, I really felt like that set them apart. And sometimes when you're pushing the action, you can see some great teamwork, and then all of a sudden the individuals on your team can take over all of that here tonight. And with tip-off coming up, we've got just enough time to hear from our good friend David Aldridge on the sideline. D.A., take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Now, Dwayne Casey has been the head coach in Toronto for the better part of a decade now. He said the most rewarding part of coaching has been watching his players grow up, watching a guy go from never playing in an NBA game before to developing into an all-star player. That's probably the most rewarding thing that you can do as a coach. Now, Kevin, he's helping this team and its players both make the leap forward. Great stuff, D.A. Coach Casey definitely gets the best out of his guys. You can tell they love playing for him. A marquee matchup tonight. Two great centers going head-to-head. -head. Brent, talk about the attributes scouts are looking for out of modern-day centers. I think one of the things that they look for first with regards to a big man, Kevin, is a guy who doesn't shy away from contact. I know the game is moving with a little more open pace and space, but still, your big guy has got to want to be physical because there are times in the game, whether he's touching it in the post or not, he's got to be a presence both offensively and defensively. That requires taking a few hits. And with the ability to pass, and you know, the guys like Bogut, even in advanced age, can still, I think, make a difference in that position. Yeah, but if you look at guys like Bogut and Steven Adams, they're still willing to sacrifice their body not for the glory of having the ball but everything they can do for getting the ball into open space for their guards that means hitting a guy setting hard screens that physicality has got to be priority one let's check out Toronto's starting lineup they've got Carter Gortat is out there with Nowitzki then there's Stephen Curry and it's DeRozan and at the shooting guard position and stolen by Murray and Bogdanovich kicks to Murray count it well, some good interior crucial points here as Murray's staying active in the paint. On defense, San Antonio. Outside DeRozan. No good on the triple. The Spurs have gone one of three for the field to start this one so far. Irving with it, and Curry picks him up defensively. Murray kicks to Booker. Spurs working the ball around now. And it's Bogdanovich in Let's the three fly, buries it from three-point range. And Kyrie being unselfish, I think there was an opportunity for him to score there, but gets off the clean look for his teammate. Here's DeRozan. Good, and Curry gets the assist. DeRozan's got six. I see you, young fella. Nice answer there. Yeah, look out. We got a long-range duel about to happen. Right side, a screen on Curry. And it's Bogdanovich in the corner. 
Just five to shoot. Right side sets the pick for Bogdanovich. Shoots over Gortat. Another shot. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Well, once his team got Whiteside the ball that close to the bucket, the defense is absolutely at his mercy. And, and you know, normally when you look at a guy like Whiteside with, with the field goal percentage and all, you think it's all about dunks. But I tell you what, he's improved his entire repertoire of scoring options near the rim. And now he's even showing that he can step out and knock down that little face-up 15-footer. For San Antonio, they've gone 2 of 5 here, making 40% so far to start out the game like the tactics on defense there, refusing to give the shooter the easy layup at the rim. And stolen by Kyrie Irving. Here's Booker, and the dunk by Booker. Well, that's just sweet passing there for Murray, keeping his eyes open and finding the open man. Whiteside, earlier in his career, didn't have as many options to score, but Greg, he's been very conscious of keeping that improvement of his game, and especially in the offensive end. And Whiteside has been self-motivated since he's come back to the NBA. He's got the great lift. Uh, he gets the hooks. He's got that baby hook up over the defenders, the soft shooting touch, and he just continues to improve offensively all the while still being a force on the defensive side of the floor. Now here's Murray following the miss by Hassan Whiteside. Whiteside a screen. Shot clock at six. They set the pick. Fires the three. Rebound by the Raptors. They're coming off that win against Philadelphia. And you know what? Up against the weak defense, they were allowed to do pretty much whatever they wanted. Yeah, what I like, though, besides that, is that they just didn't settle for it because weak defenses, you, you could take bad shots. That's not what they did here tonight. Now, this just doesn't seem to be his night, or his teams for that matter, either. And they got to pull it together here quick or it's going to be lights out. Outside Curry. Here's DeRozan. Good, and Curry gets the assist. Nine points for DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, I'd feel good with Steph Curry running the show if I was a coach. He passes like that, and it tells you just how unselfish his play can be. And San Antonio calls the first time out of the game. And Greg Popovich has led the Spurs to the playoffs in all 20 of the full seasons he's coached the team. But you know what, Brent? He always gives his players the credit. Well, Pop knows that the players are the ones who deserve all of the accolades. There's no doubt that there's an appreciation for the way that Pop continues to put his team and each member of the team into situations where they collectively can compete every year. And it's not about just competing for the playoffs, Kevin. I'm talking about competing for titles. What a run that Greg Popovich has been on. Looking at who's out there now for the Spurs. Olenek, he's checked in for Whiteside. Bobby Portis comes in for Trevor Booker. Tony Snell's checked in for Bogdanovich. And Monks subbed in for Jamal Murray. Irving passes to Portis. Monk dishes to Irving. The pass to Portis. And Dirk Nowitzki gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul. 146 left here in the opening quarter. The shot by Monk is no good. And a little frustration now missing on the catch and flush. Sometimes the easy play is the right play. You take a chance when you go for that big finish. And the one-hand slam just looks so pretty when it's in his hand and he's the one doing the slam. Agreed. He is smooth as silk, even on a power finish. DeRozan with the rebound. Toronto's gone 4-7 from three-point range so far in the first. And Curry has it in the corner. And the go-ahead bucket, no good. San Antonio's gone two or three from deep so far in this game. Now, here's Monk. DeRozan defending. There's the feed to Snell. Olenek, a screen on Cook. Just five on the clock. Snell from outside. Toronto grabs the miss. 41 seconds left to play here in the first. 
Curry kicks to DeRozan. Over Monk. Not enough on that one as it misses. Spurs shooting 36% in this first quarter, trying to get their bearings. Irving passes to Snell. It's good. And Irving really showing great strides in improving his passing, wanting to be a more effective floor general. The Spurs shooting their third free throw attempt of the game. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. It's Curry outside. That one's in his first bucket of the game. He's one for two. Just such a well-rounded offensive player. He's got a little bit of everything. Here's Monk. Screen by a winner. Monk kicks to Irving. Tried to come right back with the three of his own, but it's no good. Some great action here early as we end the first quarter. Clark in the top. And back in a moment as we'll get underway with quarter number two. And work ethic, a big part of Steph Curry's success, as he was not a highly regarded five-star recruit coming out of high school. There's obviously ways that you can get better as a player from year to year and find different ways to show you know, what you're capable of. And that's kind of how you know, my story unfolded from high school to now, is just adding a little bit of piece here, piece there every single year. And he's certainly become not only a complete player, but the kind of true star guys that every team is looking to build around. You know, when he was drafted, Steph was viewed by most scouts as a great shooter. Not a centerpiece, but boy, were they wrong. And we got a close game here as we get back to the second quarter. Guys, what's your take on the Spurs so far? Through that first one, uh, they turned this thing into a track beat. Love the pace they're playing with. Anytime you can get your offense going without the defense setting up, you've got a huge advantage. Setting the floor for the Raptors. Gortat is out there with Nowitzki. Then it's Curry. Then it's DeRozan. And it's Carter in at the three slot. DeRozan's shot is off. Spurs leading by three. Over to the wing. Olenek with it. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. Here's Portis. It's good. He makes his first shot of the game. And Kevin, they dialed up their activity this quarter. We're seeing them convert a lot of those second chance opportunities. So timeout called here. The first for Toronto. Hey Brent, Jerry West once said that his ultimate lineup would feature five, six, nine players. I feel like that in a league that features so much switching, and you were just talking about this, would that be the perfect recipe for a versatile lockdown defender? Well, I'd take four, six, nine players in Jerry West. How about that? That <laughs> yeah, might be pretty good. Always include West with anybody, right? West with anybody. No doubt about it. At <laughs> six, nine, I think what Jerry's alluding to there, Kevin, is the fact that each of those guys would have a tremendous amount of length to cover up the floor. So foot quickness, lateral movement, and then that length to bother anybody, not only challenging shots, but also getting to the rim and making sure that there's some protection around the interior part of your defense. Here's what San Antonio's going with right now. Muscala, he's checked in for Kelly Olynyk, and Murray subbed in for Irving. Toronto shooting their first foul shots of the night here. And the San Antonio Spurs, the number one ranked defense in the league, the last two seasons running, top five defensively for the last half decade. When you play the black and silver, you may end up black and blue. Here's what San Antonio's going with right now. Right side comes in for Portis, and Bogdanovich is subbed in for Tony Snell. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Kevin, the Spurs' Greg Popovich talked about developing players. He said, our method is usually tough love. I don't think coddling works, and beating them to death mentally doesn't work either. You give them a clear picture of what's demanded, show care, understand what makes them tick. If that doesn't get through, you get rid of them. Kevin? And the military background of Popovich plays a part in this way of thinking, David. It's why the Spurs have been so successful for so many years. Here's Bogdanovich. The Raptors getting the bucket. Shoots over DeRosa. Another one falls for San Antonio. 
And for the Spurs, you look at every defensive metric. Blocks, rebounding, fouls. They're ahead of the pack. Well, the steals are the only thing, Kevin, in the defensive category where they simply were just above average. And, and that's because they don't take many risks. They're, they're willing to get themselves in great position and be in great position consistently and wear down the opposition because they're just so fundamental on the defensive end of the floor. Here's Livingston following the basket by Malik Monk. Corver, good. And uh, hey, that's Corver's go-to. As soon as he catches that ball right there, it's going right up. Gotta love that approach. Monk with the ball. Now guarded by DeRozan. Right side, no good. Raptors trail by three. Left side, DeRozan. Over Monk. That misses off the backboard. And his touch has just been a little bit absent this quarter, and he's missing a ton of shots. To the left side wing. Here's Murray. A rebound by Marjanovic. Toronto's gone 6 of 14 with the three ball tonight. Just a little over 40%. It's stolen by Monk. A three ball. Hits it from three-point range. Monk's got the lead up to six now for San Antonio. And Monk's just got a good feel for kind of how to exploit the defense, especially about how quickly he gets his shot off after getting the pass. And, and he has really come to life here after a slow start in that first quarter. Love the way that Sean Livingston goes to work when he's on the floor. He knows exactly what his strengths are and how to run an offense. He can act as a scorer at times and usually does it from that mid-range post area. As a guard, not many three-point shots, but devastating from about eight feet out. San Antonio leading by five. Outside Bogdanovich. Murray dishes to Bogdanovich. To the inside. It's stolen by DeRozan. And here we go with DeRozan running it up the middle. And you want to talk about high volume scores. Just look at what DeRozan's doing tonight. He's been on a mission putting his mark on this game in a big way. Now here's Murray. He's covered by Livingston. Bogdanovich, no luck. I know it's physically impossible, but he's got to be kicking himself. He knows he's got to make those. It's stolen by Muscala. And Bogdanovich kicks to Whiteside. And the jam by Whiteside. Well, whenever Whiteside has a chance to dunk, man gone dunk. And uh, 101 left here in the second. Here's Livingston. Off target with his three. The Spurs have gotten seven of their 12 field goal attempts to drop here in the second quarter. Up over 50%. In the corner, Murray with it. And a miss there on the triple. Raptors trail by five. DeRozan with it. Now guarded by Monk. They get it again. Here's Fry. Gets himself open and drills it. I like the physicality there on the glass on full display. Great at hitting the boards and then capitalizing off the second chance opportunity. Now, here's Monk. He's got eight. Now Murray. Right side of screen. It's stolen by Marjanovic. Over to the left wing. Pass to DeRozan. Over Monk. And the shot is good. The Spurs lead has been cut down to just one on the bucket from DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, the onslaught continues. He's been unstoppable now for a couple of nights. Well, a tip of the cap to the coaching staff here. They're recognizing how well he's playing, so the game plan has been built around him. And the first half comes to a close. We've got a close game going on here. It's San Antonio up by one. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks a lot. Kyrie, what were you all focusing on coming into the game tonight? I so come out with a, you know, intense focus and intensity that, you know, other teams can't match. Just doing whatever it takes to, you know, keep our tempo. Um, you know, guys are in a, in a great rhythm and we have a great tempo. So just trying to get everybody involved and do whatever it takes to win. Well, we'll see if you can keep playing at your pace in the second half. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. 
Thank you, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of action following halftime. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. We so hope you enjoyed our first half. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. This is the Halftime Report. A pretty close game for the Spurs throughout the first quarter. Nothing seemed to give way on either side of the scoring column as they wrapped up the period all knotted up. The second quarter was a tight battle, but they were the slightly better team. Not by very much, however. Kenny, what was your take on San Antonio? They obviously came in wanting to push the axis. And so far, so good. They're looking to get easy transition baskets because the other team is not getting back on defense. Shaq. Let's get your insight on Toronto. Well, they had a strong perimeter game. See, Ernie, when this team executes from long range, those weapons spread out of defense. Coming out of the second half, if those shooters are hot, they got a great chance to take control of this game. And that will wrap up our halftime report, as it's just about time for the start of the second half. We have a close ball game on our hands as we get set for the second half of basketball. A fantastic game from DeMar DeRozan so far. And the defense was soft in that first half, and he took advantage every chance he could, and boy, was he throwing it down hard. Well, it's one thing to drive, but it's another thing to drive and dunk, so let's see if he can keep that going here in the third. Toronto's gone outside a lot tonight. 17 times, in fact. 7 of 17. And you look at the Raptors, one of the top teams in the East, Greg, but do they have a chance to go all the way? I think they're a threat to make the finals. Can, can they win it all? Uh, they may be a piece or two away, but still a young and aggressive core. They continue to try to add pieces, and this is a group that has proven they want to win and win that. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go for the second half of basketball. On the court for San Antonio. Bogdanovich out there with Booker. Then there's Whiteside. Then there's Irving. And it's Murray in at the two-guard spot. And he gets contact and the whistle on the shot. Two shots coming up. And with the offense getting right to the rim, at least they saved the layup. The Raptors shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. The free throw drops from Marjanovic. Hey, Brent, you went from player to announcer. What different aspect of the game do you notice now watching it from the booth? You know, I think it's great just to have the perspective when I'm able to sit courtside, Kevin, and, and watch everything that goes on outside the play. The reaction from coaches to, to players and their demeanor, whether they're carrying out their assignments, watch guys on the bench. So, so much more emotion I can catch sitting on the sidelines next to you. I bet. A nice shot by Irving. I like seeing Kyrie pull the trigger from right there when he's got his feet underneath him. Those percentages go way up. This is two, DeRozan. Here's Curry with the three. Good. And it's DeRozan picking up the assists. Six points for Steph Curry. Timely passing leads to assists, and that's been the recipe for success. Bogdanovich passes to Irving. From the stripe. And it falls over the rim and in. Irving's got his third bucket of the night. Kyrie made enough room to get the shot off there. The in-between game right now, he's showing off his precise. The offensive rebound. Fry dishes to DeRozan. Good D by Booker. And, and, and typically, he has the touch to finish when he's in tight, but not sure on that possession. Bogdanovich, no luck. Raptors with the lead. Outside DeRozan. No good on the shot. Good D by Booker. Yeah, this is a terrible start for him, and it has to be weighing on him. Now here's Irving. He's got seven. Addition out to Murray. 
Booker is screen on DeRozan. And it's Bogdanovich in the corner. Six on the shot clock. Misfires on the corner three. And you know what? You can't get a better screen. Frees him up beautifully, but he just fails to capitalize. Oh, man, he'd love to have that one back. He just does everything right, but doesn't get the finish. And here is Murray. After Kyle Korver hitting the three, San Antonio calls timeout. In the Spurs last season, how about setting the all-time record for consecutive winning seasons with 20? This is a group that's won 50 or more games in every one of those seasons except the strike shortened one in 99. A different look now for San Antonio. Olenek, he's checked in for Whiteside. Portis comes in for Trevor Booker, and Tony Snell subbed in for Bogdanovich. Nice job coming off that screen. And that's now seven points for Jamal Murray. Well, if Murray can do that and become a threat from the three-point line, look out. And Greg, for the Spurs, they're so competitive. It's, it's inevitable. They just win year after year. Yeah, but that big three of Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili, the all-time winningest trio in the history of our league, had a lot to do with it. And as that era comes to an end, they're doing a terrific job of just picking up new star talent without skipping a beat. And the Spurs with possession after the missed three from Stephen Curry. Irving can't get it to go. Well, he made one three in the first half, but he hasn't found a way to connect again from outside during the second. Here's DeRozan, and he drops in the layup off the glass. DeRozan's got 24. And you got to love the big bucket in the paint in this. What about grind it out game? Irving kicks to Portis. Charity stripe shot. And it's Toronto with the rebound. DeRozan's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. This is his first chance at the line tonight. A year ago, he had an 84% success rate on his foul shots. So he was a guy they were always happy to see at the line. And the Spurs making a change here. Monks checked in. A new group in now for the Raptors. Dwayne Dedman's checked in for Marjanovic. Novitski comes in for Channing Frye. Vince Carter is checked in for Kyle Korver. And it's Livingston in for Steph Curry. Toronto leading by five. DeRozan passes to Dedman. Shoots over Olenek. And good. And it takes a nice bounce off the right iron and down. Dedman using his size on the inside and the defense trying to do their best to keep him away from the basket. Not that time. Irving drives in. It's tipped, but they'll get another chance. Here's Snell, defended by Carter. Second shot opportunity. Takes a big high bounce and goes in. Snell's got his second basket of the night. And the Raptors with the ball. It's a five-point game. Their next game is at Oracle Arena, so a road game with the Warriors. That will be their second of six road games for the team. Here's Livingston. That one falls, coming off Carter's feed. Livingston's got himself on the board with three there. That's not usually where Livingston is going to make his living, but nice to see him step back from time to time and drill it. From 11 feet away... Olenek dishes to Irving. Another miss by Irving. Another rebound hauled in. They're hitting the glass with a lot of passion. A chance there to push it to double digits, but it's off the mark. If they increase the tempo, they got a chance at a two-for-one. Yeah, and you're going to have to get up a quick shot to make that happen. Here's Portis. Feeds it to Snell. Six to shoot. Irving from long range. Again, Irving missing. 
Deadman kicks to Livingston. Pass to DeRozan. Stolen away. That's a two from Snell. No good. Well, Deadman does such a good job as a mobile, quick-footed big man. Good at contesting the shots down there. And so it's Toronto. In the driver's seat, up eight points at the end of the quarter. And you have to credit their defense for the job they've been doing against Irving. Kyrie's been almost invisible out there, and we don't say that very often. And don't go away. We'll be right back. A chance now to hear Greg Popovich talking to his team just moments ago. Nobody holds the ball, not even 1,001. You catch it, it's a shot, it's a drive or pass, whatever you got. Specific instructions from... Greg Popovich, if you don't have a clean look, don't have an open lane, move the ball. Yeah, and the key is fast decision making, and that takes great recognition from all five guys in terms of communication. That, that's really what we call chemistry. Just one quarter left in regulation. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. On the court for Toronto to start the fourth. They've got Livingston. Nowitzki is out there with Carter. Then it's Dwayne Dedman, and it's DeRozan in at the two. Here's Snell, the 11-footer, up again, and Booker able to finish. Booker's got the first basket as we get going in the fourth for the Spurs. Oh, how about the finesse there? Nice little gentle touch on the board. And you know, when you have that gentle touch, those tip-ins are easy to come by. Great vision from Sean Livingston scanning the floor and finding the man. Spurs trail by eight. Outside Irving. Solid as a rock from 20 feet away. And we've played through about a minute here in the fourth. Lee outside. Fires for three. And the three ball is good. And the Raptors lead by nine. And Lee has shot in the high 30s in terms of his percentage throughout his career from deep. He's left uncovered. He can knock it down. Here's Portis. Irving with a clean look. And they wasted no time getting those three points back. Irving's got nine points now in just the second half. Raptors leading by six. Kicks it to Lee. Launches a three. It's rebounded by Portis. Portis has got four rebounds now tonight. Here's Snell, defended by Carter. They set the pick. Irving from long range. The shot, no good. And Toronto will go the other way with it. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. Fires from deep. Livingston, no luck. The Spurs have gone three of five here in the fourth quarter. Pretty good numbers coming out of the break. Monk, the best to Snell. Can't hit from in close. The Raptors have gone two for five on field goal attempts in the fourth quarter. Lee, that's good. And one of the things that Lee does fairly well is the change of speed. So tough for the defense to get timing on him. Time called here. The Spurs decide to talk it over. And Courtney Lee, one of the more reliable pros in the NBA. That might not sound like a lot, Kevin, but coaches are always looking for consistent things they can rely on from any given player. And Courtney Lee has done that. A two guard that can defend, can knock down some threes, and isn't going to get outside of himself all that often. Looking at who's out there now for the Spurs. Whiteside's checked in for Portis. Bogdanovich comes in for Tony Snell. And Murray's subbed in for Monk. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. During that break, Greg Popovich really had some strong advice for his team. He told him, now's when you turn it on. Leave them in the rearview mirror. I know we can put these guys away. We'll see if they can deliver. Thank you, David. And you can see the play calling this half. Another one from distance. Yeah, no question. It looks like they've rented out room along the perimeter in this ball game, And they're likely to keep doing this until the defense...
Makes an adjustment. No, right now he is locked in. He's getting great shots and he's burning the D in a variety of ways. Murray with it. He's picked up by Lee. Right side of screen. Irving for three. Good on the three-point shot. Irving's got a pair of threes here in the fourth quarter for the Spurs. Livingston kicks to Carter. And he can't answer back. A three-pointer offline. Spurs trail by 10. Pat Donovich wide open. Yes, and it's Irving picking up the assist. Irving's got three assists tonight. And you just have to admire that aggressive nature of Bogdanovich. He's just itching to pull the trigger as soon as the ball hits his hand. Back at you. That's payback for the three on the other end. Uh, a little mano y mano there, entertaining, but you also want to keep your teammates involved. And that basket is going to count. Goaltending the official call. That's a very close call. I'm sure he thinks it's a clean block, but looks like it was on the way down. Catching up on the changes for Toronto. DeMar DeRozan comes in for Vince Carter. And Stephen Curry subbed in for Sean Livingston. And the basket by DeRozan. I mean, he is tearing the defense apart. And let's face it, they have not brought their A game on that side of the ball. On its way from Irving for two. And yep, a couple bounces, and it falls. Toronto leading by eight. And here is Curry. Here's DeRozan. And it's Hassan Whiteside with the rebound. Whiteside's got three rebounds so far in the game. Murray with it. Now guarded by DeRozan. There's a screen. It's Bogdanovich on the wing. Whiteside a screen on Lee. Five on the clock. A putback. A shot off that time. And Toronto will come the other way. Here's DeRozan. All on the play. Basket count. So it'll be a three-point play chance. And now as the clock ticks down, this is going to end up as a solid victory here for Toronto. Tonight, they seem committed to the three-point shot. Uh, that was the bread and butter. Fortunately, they made enough of those, but, but sometimes it was quantity over quality. And so with this, they'll end up with their second win on the year. And so they win their first game against this squad. It's a two-game season series, and they'll be going for the sweep the next time they face off. And you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for DeMar DeRozan. Well, he could not be stopped on offense. Super efficient tonight. There wasn't a lot the defense could do. And it's Murray with the jam. And some good anticipation there. Murray quickly out, leaking in transition and filling the lane. The basket counts and one. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it a three-point play. Yeah, with, with this lead, uh, that's probably going to do it. Fans heading for the exits. Now the team came in, fired up from the opening tip. You could see the focus. They're ready to do battle. And DeRozan. Here we go. Got a piece of it. Here's Snell. Takes a three. Off on that one. And so Toronto takes this one, but by a big margin. And in the win, a comfortable win in what was, I think, G, a pretty hostile environment. It, it really was. You, you know, it's never going to be easy on the road, but they didn't have too many problems with that tonight. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thank you. DeMar, this team is playing well together. How are you encouraging and fostering that sense of all of you being together and playing well? Um, we're just making everybody comfortable. We're making each and everybody on this team comfortable. If it's jump shots, if it's sacking the basket, you know, even if it's on the defensive end, you know, we're just giving each other confidence every time we practice. And it sure looks like it out there tonight, DeMar. Thanks a lot. Kevin, back to you. All right, David, thank you. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Brent Berry, Greg Anthony, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. We'll see you later.
Yeah. Now I be the cat that be hard to meet. Yeah, from girls that used to hardly speak. Come on. Bad, 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 bad boy. Yeah. You make me feel so good. Uh-huh. You know you make me feel so good. You know you bad make boy. me feel so good. That's what we do. Bad, 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 yeah. bad boy. I wouldn't change you if uh-uh. I could. I wouldn't change you if I could. Come on. I wouldn't change you if I could. Let's go. Day for me.